Hi everyone, and I am today in the fancy glasses, not just because my eyes got bad, just because we are in a very special place. This place is a recycle company for the plastic, and we are here because one of our machinery for short color sorters are working here for a bit of while now. It's been almost two years. No, so we bought it two years ago, mm -hmm. but we had to install it and we had many delays and we just, today so, is the first day it's worth. Oh, really started? Yeah. Okay, that's yes. cool. So we are even more excited to start together with you. Yeah. And we have our engineer here today. Yes. So working on this project, uh, helping with, uh, with adjusting and stuff. But let's start kind of far back. Uh, why plastic? Like, what brought you into this business? So, uh, Talco has been recycling plastic for the last 52 years. Whoa. Yes. I didn't know that plastic re re recycling yes. exists so long. Right. So, it's plastic amazing. recycling uh, started by the previous owner of the company, and they were garbage hoarders. They took off everything to the dump. Mm -hmm. And they realized that there is value in the plastic, so they started a company, small company and they started grinding plastic mm -hmm. and selling it to other companies. So the current owner bought the company about 37 years ago and he took it from a small, tiny company to what we are. We are one of the largest plastic recyclers in California uh, who's doing this one type of container which is the number two bottle. Number two bottle? Yes. Okay. It is HDPE. So we have a lot of equipment <clears throat> and after doing a lot of research, we found your company because all the components are non-Chinese and the components are basically, you know, I could go to Walmart and buy it. Uh, we decided to give this a try. So two years later here, I'm talking about it. We just started the machine, so I can't tell you how well, it's working, uh, but as of right now, what we see, it's doing what we want it to do. Sorting out the, the opaque, natural HDPE color plastic from the colored ones. Okay, that's, that's pretty fair. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. We make a point to keep everything very transparent right. in our parts. That's why even in our catalog, you can discover each part, where it's made of, uh, we're using Japanese producers, German, American. So all the parts are very well-known brands, right. very reliable, and uh, we prefer to invest at the beginning more into parts than versus invest in later in a customer service and nerve system, you know what I mean? Right. So that's, that's actually our point. But can you introduce yourself a little bit? Uh, yes. Uh, when you started this, uh, with the company and what is your role? Right, so my name is uh, Ajit Pereira. I the Vice President of Post-Consumer Operations at Talco Plastics. I have worked, worked for the company for the past 36 years. Oh. And I started at, at the very bottom and worked my way up to BP operations. And uh, it's a fantastic company to work with. Uh, this plant was built by me because I was the uh, project manager. My background is in engineering, so I was able to put every, a whole crew of different, different engineers together. And we designed and built most of the equipment out here. We didn't build anything from scratch, we bought and we modified. And that's how we started the wash lines and all the other machinery we have here. So we have been at it for many, many years. Wow, yes. that's pretty impressive, 36 years. Yes. I don't understand much about the rest of the machinery, even though it looks very impressive. Uh, everything works kind of on its own. It's not that many people in the factory really, yes. really kind of operating. It really works kind of automatically. But definitely I can um, appreciate how well you install the color sorter. You know, it's, you. it's very good job and you painted it. It's, it looks beautiful. It's like yeah. really a masterpiece. Yeah. So I definitely can tell that you have some engineering background 
and uh, you know it shows like you, you love what you're doing and it's, it shows in the factory like everything is neat working in place and looks great yeah so we have a little more work to get complete it we stopped because we want want to understand how everything works and then we will fully automate it we will there will be almost nobody around Mm -hmm. only to turn the switches on and off and then we are going to just let it go on its own. So wow. that will be the final phase. Right now, we, this is the first time we are doing this, so we didn't want to invest a lot of money, more money on it, trying to op completely automate it. Mm -hmm. But our goal is to basically turn a switch on and walk away. Wow. Yeah, so, so basically it's a dream of each business to sleep and the money is still making, right? <laughs> no, unfortunately, uh, we don't make money, much money here. This is all passion. Uh, if we were making money and if I was making money, I would have done something else. <laughs> For sure. Recycling business is extremely tough. This is a very difficult business to be in. Right. But because the owner and a lot of us who work here are very passionate about what we do and we are passionate about recycling plastic, so we come to work every morning. We, make, we have, there's a purpose to wake up in the morning and come to work. We don't drag ourselves to work. We, we on our own decide to come here because this work is important. You got a dream, you got to protect it. Oh, I wish, sure. wish there was money, but uh, <laughs> we can always dream. Yeah, let's hope money yeah. is coming. It cannot be wrong to do the right thing. And that definitely, we appreciate you, you guys doing it. Definitely, you are on the mission. Each time I buy something in the store, I wish it wouldn't be this packaging. I just pick my stuff, but most of the things we buy packaged today. Yeah. So we definitely do appreciate your work a lot, that you actually uh, recycling it and cleaning up our planet, our mess around, you know, because we affecting ecology tremendously with all these packages. Yes. And literally, if you think about it, if nobody would recycle it, we probably would be this high with our own plastic waste. trash. <laughs> yeah, waste, for sure. But there's, like I mentioned to you earlier, uh, <clears throat> there is a new law that's coming in the US. It's called Extended Producer Responsibility, EPR. Mm -hmm. California has placed some rules. Uh, there is <clears throat> Oregon, Colorado, uh, I believe uh, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Alabama! Uh, and Massachusetts, I believe, is looking into it right now. So eventually, what, what they're going to do is they are going to say, hey, if you put something in a package, you have to be responsible. The person who makes that package or puts the product in the package has to make sure that package can be recycled is, and is recycled. Mm -hmm. Because they're asking, they're putting the onus on the manufacturer of the package. So the people who are making packages, very soon we're going to see maybe smaller packages. One of the reasons we have these big packages are because of theft. Right. Right. Because if you put, for instance, I can think of uh, a lipstick. If you have a lipstick by itself, it's very easily concealed in yourself and someone can walk away with it. So they put the lipstick, which is this small, in a big package <laughs> right. so nobody can walk away with it. So, so, but all this will, will get resolved. They'll figure out ways of uh, reducing the theft. Right. By not by increasing the package side, but by, by uh, you know, figuring some other manner. So yes, EPR is gonna come in, play a big part in the US. Uh, just like in Europe, Europe also has these laws. They have, they have these laws for many, many, many years. And they have reduced their plastic footprint. And I think the United States is moving towards that. So, we certainly should yes. be doing that yes. because we are a huge nation yes. and we probably produce the most yes. of the plastic packaging yes. and everything. Yes. So we definitely have to be more responsible yes. and I'm, I'm willing to be a part of it to totally. So I'm happy to know that you guys are also working towards it with AI to recognize packages, shapes, right. which right. is packages and uh, you guys are obviously a part of this whole process because here we are buying some equipment from you. We think we can make work. 
Right. Um, and we will uh, hope that you continue to grow. You guys innovate, and there'll be people like us who'll be willing to uh, work with you and make it happen. Oh, so, for sure, we appreciate it. I also think uh, I was very, very surprised, uh, and I mean, I called you three days ago. Mm -hmm. So I spoke to Elena before, and I, she passed me on to you because she doesn't work for you guys anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and you immediately, a couple of days later, you offered to come out here, all the way from the East Coast, send your engineer, who fortunately was here, but was in North Carolina, flew, flew out so that we could test our machines, and also willing to come back here after the long holiday on Monday to bring your engineer back here so that we can continue to make different recipes. Uh, this is unheard of. I'm telling you, this is unheard of. This is, a, this is one of the reasons why we invested with you guys. We felt that the conversation, the discussions have been very open and honest. I never expected you guys to be willing to work with us two years after we bought the machines. A lot of other companies have said, oh, sorry, sir, it's past the warranty. If you need somebody out here, you have to pay. And here you are willing to come out, send somebody at no charge and get us started. So I really appreciate it. And uh, you will definitely do well if you keep up this good work, you know. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's just a honey to my heart. Uh, reality is we're living here, right? We, yes. we are part of the United States and we see lately we are really lacking on customer service. And uh, a lot of companies using pandemic as an excuse, but reality is pandemic passed mm -hmm. and we still have to keep on going and uh, we have to improve, we need to grow, and definitely part of the growth and part of the qualities and make everyday life more quality is definitely customer service. Right. And certainly we have a history of relationship with our customers where somebody bought a piece of equipment with us 10 years ago, and then in a couple of years, they need additional equipment, and in a couple of years, they upgrade and they grow, and we happy to tell those stories, to make a little videos about it. We happy to grow as a company on our own, as well as be a part of our customers' growth. Mm. Because it's it's amazing to see how companies growing, upgrading equipment, buy any bigger one, a newer one, or additional pieces, and it's it's certainly cool. So. Such a thing as, oh, no longer we interested to hear from you, it doesn't exist for us. We believe in long-term relationship mm -hmm. with our customers. We believe that tomorrow we want to be in business as well, yes. right? We uh, definitely invest time and energy in our reputation. Right. We upgrade our machinery, we make sure, make things better and better as you mentioned with that AI coming with the color soda that's another step which gonna um, even give us more possibilities on the recycling side and overall on the on the cleaning um, grain or whatever we separate with color sodas so definitely customer service I think it's a key you know what I mean because immediate sale it gives you money today right but it's better to make less today possibly but be in business in 30 years or 50 years just like your company you know does mm. so that's that's our mission you know what I mean? uh, and with the attitude and and your willingness to do what you're doing you will definitely succeed yeah, i've been sure. around i've seen a, seen a lot of people i've been around and bought millions of dollars of the equipment. And I wish everyone I dealt with had the same customer service and attitude and responsibility uh, that you guys have. So really kudos to you, uh, you will succeed. And I will do my part by recommending you. If somebody comes to me, I will definitely recommend you. Now we have to give the machine some time to work. Right. And make sure that it's all doing what it's supposed to do. And then obviously at that point, I'll be happy to recommend you guys for the work. 
Perfect. We appreciate you a lot. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And we will try our best to improve and, you know, make something new for you, something more right. important, because right. practically the idea is to make cleaning processes, yes. either that the grain or plastic, whatever that is, fast, easy and more profitable. Right. So that's the ultimate um, right. idea. So, yeah. And you mentioned um, number two bottle. Yes. What does that mean? So it's a uh, plastic has uh, the bottles have uh, different numbers. For instance, uh, this is a P PET bottle, this is a number one. Mm -hmm. An HDPE bottle is a number two, which is your milk, water, deter detergent, not this water, uh -huh. the other water, mm -hmm. and the big one gallon water, mm -hmm. uh, juice, and then they make shampoo containers, uh, they make um, and detergent containers, oil containers. Mm -hmm. So this is all on, or is all collected by the trash hauler, and we as a recycler we purchase it, and we recycle it back into a pellet, so that the material can be used right back again into non-food contact mm -hmm. containers. Oh wow! There's also they make pipe out of it. They make sheets out of it. They make plastic pots out of it, this material is recycled back into products, oh. you know. So that's one way of saving the world, right? So the numbers are one through seven. One is PET, number two is HPPE, number three, I believe, is polystyrene, number four is low-density polyethylene, number five is polypropylene, three is PVC, my mistake, and mm -hmm. number six is polystyrene, number seven is other, so it's, it's multiple layers of plastic, then it's called other. This is how the plastics are numbered. You know, there are millions of types of plastic, so maybe thousands of types of plastics. Right. And unfortunately, plastics don't mix, they don't like each other. Really? Yeah, so you cannot take a number one and mix it with a number two to make a number three, it doesn't work. Better. If you mix it, it's garbage. My mom always said, life was like a box of chocolates. So this is why we are using a lot of technology and humans to sort this plastic out. Huh, I didn't know about right? that. Right, so this is a lot of people don't know that. You know, For don't instance, know. this bottle, this is a PET. The cap is polyethylene. Mm -hmm. okay. If you try to melt these two together, oh, and, and, and the label is low density so If you try to melt all this together, you, this not is going garbage. To work. It won't work. It will be in the trash. So, it's so we do it's everything separate. to separate all this. Separate. Once you put this in the trash, once this goes in the trash, that bit, right. it will get crushed. And then wherever it goes, they have equipment that will chop this all up, take this out, and take take the cap out. So that is what we're doing with, with this, right? With your color sorting. Right. right. We're sorting out some colors because we're trying to get the caps out because some of the caps have colors. So we're trying to get the caps out. Mm -hmm. Fortunately for us, some of the caps we can tolerate, but the, the less caps we have, the quality of the product is better. I see. Yes. So after this shredded, it goes through the... A wash process. Washing. Oh, to re remove the oh, whatever product yes, can be inside. Yes, yes. And after... To remove washed, the residue, remove the paper, and so on, so on. Okay. And after that, it goes to some drying? Yeah, so after it's washed, it's mechanically and thermally dried. And then we extrude it. You make pasta at home? You know, the big screw <laughs> in the machine? Right. That you make pasta, the same thing. We have gigantic machines that have heaters on them and it melts all that plastic and we make a tiny bead out of it. So we make a small pellet out of it. And that pellet is used again when they're making a product. They melt it and they add, they make their products with it. Wow, I didn't know that mm -hmm. process is so complicated and so interesting. <laughs> Seriously, okay. And after you separate it, so the colors, are, are they still can be used for something or it yes. all have to be clean? No, so the colors can be turned into a green or a gray. So there are people who make green pots, mm -hmm. green bottles, green trash cans. Mm. So we can use them. When we separate this, the value is greater because now they can make any color from that. 
Oh, so it's about color. Yeah, it's about color. That's why so color eventually, work. someday, I'm going to come to you after we know this is all working. And we are going to sit down as a team and work together so I can sort all the different colors. Okay. So you're going to tell me, hey, we're going to build some machines because right now we are only sorting two colors, right? We have mm -hmm. two parts. Mm -hmm. We are sorting the natural and color. Right? Mm -hmm. But someday I want you to build us a machine that can sort maybe six or eight different parts. We, wow. we will work together and figure it out. But it certainly have to be several eyes and several brains to do that. Because I like to talk about color sorter as, as an eye yeah. and a brain. Yes. Basically, this is how it works, right? right? And then it's used as the ejector, the yes. air to spit out their own colors. Right, so what, but, you know, the brain... But you, you and I can always see different colors, right? Right. So the camera can see different colors too, right? It does. And then we have to program the brain to say, Okay, if you see blue, you shoot to this ejector. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. If you see red, you shoot to this ejector. We can do some stuff like it that. It certainly has to be we, a lot we, of shoots, yeah. Yes, we will have to discuss this, like I said, yeah. For sure, that's yes. a very interesting yes. point. Yeah, yes. I, I like that. Yes. Well, we appreciate you. I know you. it's been a long day for you. It's been a long week. We come into a 4th of July, yeah. <laughs> right? So I certainly wish you a great 4th of July. Thank you. And to and tell you, you, thank you for having us over. Thank you for answering all our questions. Thank you for choosing Metra. And we certainly will be in touch. Yes. And, uh, you know, we open for whatever discussions, whatever we can be helpful with in the future. And um, thank you very much. Thank you.